a darkness is closing in around Idlib. The Syrian regime is creeping closer, recapturing territory in a merciless advance. Those who oppose it take shelter where they can. The UN says there's no safe space left here. Almost a million have fled. Here, 26 families are living in this empty shell. The tarpaulin walls put up by Ismail Yusuf aren't enough to keep out the cold or the sound of regime shelling. Bashar al-Assad's forces are less than six miles from here. If the regime comes here, we will head to Turkey, but they aren't letting anyone in. In the end, we will have to go to the border, because the alternative is death. Towns and villages have been emptied out. A million people have fled in the last three months. The border camps are full. Abu Juma has already tried to leave once. The shelling is close enough now to make the children flinch. It was like Judgment Day. There were columns upon columns of vehicles leaving. There was nowhere to go. There were no houses left to rent, not even tents. Rebel-held Idlib is shrinking fast. These Turkish-backed forces and armed jihadists have lost village after town. They took us closer to the front lines. Turkey has given them new weapons and vehicles. But they're outmatched by the regime and Russia and powerless to stop the advance. The airstrikes have been the single most effective weapons against us, says this commander. War has been these children's lives. Here at Idlib Orphanage No. 1, they try to shut it out, but it's getting harder. The battle came knocking again earlier this week when regime shells landed close by. The girls were terrified. They held one another and started crying. They said this was the last safe place after fleeing so many times. Where would they go? Would this be the place where they would all die? The situation here has never been more bleak and they can already feel the regime's grasp. It has bombed people in hospitals and markets, and earlier this week it shelled this camp too. A ceasefire may be the only hope, but they're keeping their cars and belongings packed, just in case. It's a squalid end to Syria's war, but still, people here tell us they much rather endure this than suffer under Bashar al-Assad's rule. It's now the biggest exodus of the conflict. They've fled time and time again, and now they can go no further. So they ask, now that there are so many of them, can the world continue to ignore their fate? For young and old, there is now almost no safe place in Idlib. After enduring nine years of misery, the last place they want to be is left at the mercy of Bashar al-Assad. Quentin Somerville, BBC News, Idlib.